prove me now. Prove me now. So I used to attend this Agape Spiritual Center in Los Angeles, and I was on staff there for three years with the Department of Education. And there I worked with the head of the Department of Education, was Reverend Nirvana. He was the assistant minister. He's actually co-created Agape with Reverend Michael. They were friends since teenager years, and they created as practitioners these Agape love workshops, and from that came the Agape Center. Reverend Nirvana, like Reverend Michael and so many people, epitomizes this place. Agape means unconditional love, and he epitomizes that. And I had the wonderful opportunity by working there, experiencing that love firsthand. There was one time, for instance, where I was, where I had done something in a more public way that I was not proud of. And I felt very embarrassed, and I felt very small, and ugly, and ashamed. And of course, when we feel like that, what we want to do is hide. And the last thing we want to do is talk to anybody. But Reverend Nirvana called me to the table and said, hey, you come talk to me. And was, there was other people around, but he said, come over here and talk with me. And I come from the psychological world, and I knew all sorts of things like, here's what you should have done. or you know, I was imagining all these things he was going to say to me. He started talking. And when he started talking, he just started saying what he saw in me. He said, I see who you are, you are an incredibly beautiful being. And he just started pouring these words of who I really was out to me. And that's a blessing in of itself, but I actually don't remember what he said to me because as soon as those words started coming, these waves of love just started washing over me, wave after wave after wave of love pouring on me, healing me. When I felt so small, the last thing I felt were those things. So it would have just been one thing if it had been the words, but the words were so overpowered by the energy coming and washing over me. Prove me now. It's this love, the power of this love that we are here to prove to ourselves and to each other on this planet. Because I've had the blessing of experiencing that love coming through Nirvana, I had no trouble when he was believing and, and trusting that this the story that he shared of one day when he was walking in a neighborhood and a young teen came up to him very aggressively and stuck a gun in his chest and said, I want all your money now. And Reverend Nirvana's first response was love. He said, I saw who this guy was. He opened his arms and he said, brother, what are you doing? And again, if it was just the words, but I know with that open heart, with those open hands, came all the love pouring. And this boy, teenager, who was in one moment feeling nothing but pure aggression, started crying almost instantly and dropped his gun and apologized in an instant from pure aggression to tenderness and seeking forgiveness. Prove me now. We are here to remember that the love that created this entire universe, the love intelligence, is more powerful and more real than anything else we are experiencing in this world. Over and over, this world is trying to tell us that all these relative experiences, these, these dualistic experiences are real and that we have to operate and fix things and change things. Nirvana didn't try to fix me. He didn't try to fix that boy he just loved. He saw the truth of who and what they were, not just with his mind, but with his heart, with his whole body, with his whole beingness. And for me, that is what prove me now means. It's not about a gaining idea of trying to get something. That love already exists. It's not a reward. Sometimes when we hear that passage from Malachi, it's a beautiful passage, but I think it's sometimes we get into the materialistic view that if I give money, that then this, I will be rewarded by receiving money. That somehow I'm, I'm going to prove God, so I'll give money and people wait and hope God's going to give them money. That's not what this passage, well, that could, well, well that would be another talk some other day. But the thing about money is it's tangible, and that's what I think we're longing for, is we want the tangibleness. We don't want a God that's ethereal, that's just nice when we, nice heaven place that we go when we die, but something that's real and tangible in this form. And what I see it as meaning is we are not giving just, it's not about giving money, it's about giving our entire being to God, giving our whole life as much as we possibly can, and that grows, as Shunra Suzuki said in his reading, it grows day in and day out, year after year as we practice this, that giving ourselves over to our true nature. Ramana Maharshi, a Hindu guru, said God guru, and a guru could be Buddha, could be uh, a guru in India, could be Jesus, God guru self, it's all the same thing. 
There's no separation. When we give ourselves over to God, to a guru, to the infinite self, the I am that I am, we are giving ourselves over to our true nature. And our true nature doesn't come and go. It is always there. All the love, all the abundance, all the good is already there. We are not making it happen. We are not doing anything to bargain, to fix or make it happen. We are making ourselves available to it over and over by giving ourselves over to this infinite oceanic love that is everywhere present. Day in and day out, we are making ourselves available to move through our very life, and we become a living blessing to all those people who come in contact with us. And I want to say that this is not about perfection. Reverend Nirvana has his shadow side just like I have my shadow side. He has his limitations. This love is not waiting for us to become perfect. It is not waiting for us to have or do any certain thing. It is always available to everyone all of the time, no matter what your life is, looks like, no matter what's going on in your life, this love is available to you instantly, instantly, the moment we make ourselves available to it. And it includes all of who we are. It includes our failures and our shadow side and our limitations, however you want to put that, including our bright side, our magnificent side. It includes all of us, all of who we are individually and who we are as a planet. This is the prove me now. When we continue to return to our true source, to that infinite love intelligence, we prove it because we become it. We prove it not in a way that we can necessarily tangibly, I can't show how those waves of love experienced, but I, can, I experience it. It's proved in my heart. And that's what we're doing is proving it in our heart over and over. But it can be a challenge because there's a lot of density. There's a lot of belief and mass consciousness of duality in our world. And so we get pulled into that. We've all had that experience where we've had that awakening moment and bam, we forget the moment we're in another group of people or in another situation. I just totally forgot that whole experience that I had and I'm back into the duality. And that's why we have each other. I was so um, relieved. I was, in, I was taking classes in New Thought these were years ago and <clears throat> I was working in a business. This was before I was working at a church. Before I, I was working in a business with very unethical people. And I was, um, and they were very charming, but unethical. And so, <laughs> so it's not like, I mean, we sometimes have, like, it's startling bad people. No, they were really fun and great, and I liked them, but they just had no ethics. And so I would, I was always hoping, I was taking these classes, so I'd always hope that I would be, bring some light when I would go there, and that I would be a blessing somehow. But I always got caught. The moment I was in there, they were so charming, and the next thing I knew, I was caught in the trap again. I'd go to class, I'm like, oh, I forgot. And, um, and so I felt like, oh, just like, why can't I stay awake when I'm with them? And so I was very gratified when I read in Paramahansa Yogananda, in one of his books somewhere, um, he was saying that everybody needs to be surrounded by people who are doing spiritual work. He said the most enlightened being on this planet, if they walked into a, in, into a group of completely dense people and they did not have support, they would be pulled down, that they... No one can do this on their own, no matter how enlightened, how awake. That's why he pointed out that all spiritual masters that have walked this earth have always surrounded themselves with spiritually awake people because we, nobody, nobody can do this on their own. We need each other. When I worked at Agape, the pastoral care ministry, was, there was just, it was a chain of support. So one person would go out and visit, but that person would then call someone else to pray for them, to support them, and then, they would, then there was another group that supported all the support people. So there was just this chain of support, recognizing that the person who's visiting isn't doing this by themselves. That if we want to lift that vibrational frequency up, we need to support and help one another. And so not only is this important for us as individuals in our own spiritual growth, and that's why one of the reasons why we have communities is to support one another, because I know all of us are doing spiritual work on our own, this whole beautiful building that they created is for that. Um, there's another aspect that's interesting about this, and that's the whole what's happening on our planet. My bet is everyone on this, in this room resonates with being a global citizen. We know that we are one, not just with our group, with our family, not just with the people of this nation. We are one with every life form on this planet. We are one with this planet itself. And that is very all-inclusive and accepting, and we love this part of ourselves. But sometimes we forget that that also means we are one with all the pain and suffering that's on this planet. 
that the moment I say every sentient life on this planet is my brother and sister, that I that every being on this planet matters to me, you know, every plant and animal and and the in the ocean, everything matters to me, then suddenly I can be completely overwhelmed with the pain and the suffering. Because what we know on the spiritual path is the more we wake up, the more sensitive we become. The more we feel that pain, more, more acutely. And so it's almost this incredible paradox that on the one hand we're saying we're open, we're more open than ever before to all the planet. We feel our connection with everybody. And at the same time, we feel the pain more acutely than most people. And I, so I experienced many times on the spiritual path that those of us on the spiritual path are sometimes even more shut down to the pain because it's so much. We can't take it all in. We can't take that pain in. So I was being with, how do we be with that? How do we, how do we be with that? And I think that is why so many people, we have Karen Fry who just became a minister and is starting a community in San Francisco. So many people are being called to start communities. Because it's one thing to have online classes, it's one thing to have all these retreats and the things that we are doing individually, but we need to start creating vortexes of energy, of love, of actually people in presence, just like people like to go to a, a sports stadium and, and cheer on sports because you feel the energy, the physical energy of being with other people, or going to a concert and you feel the physical joy of being with other people. These spiritual communities are to create vortexes of love because the more powerful that this vortex becomes as a community, the more we can do the healing healing work for the whole planet, the more we can start taking in the suffering of the planet and not be taken into it, but becoming the blessing. So we're not being drawn down by the density, but we are lifting the density up because we are coming together as a collective group. And that is the power, and that is why I believe that as much as I have tried to say no, <laughs> Edie pointed out it's been nine months since I left Unity of Tri-Valley, it's a, a birthing experience, that we have to say yes. If, we, if, there, if there's any part of us that says we want to make this world a better place, that presence, that love intelligence in us is not going to let us say no. And that's why we're here today, is to say yes to being that vortex of love and that we need each other. That as much as the spiritual but not religious people like to do our work on our own and be on our own individual path, because we've come from maybe dogmatic religious paths and we don't want to be confined or limited by dogma, but then we start doing all this work on our own. So it's to create communities where I have the freedom to practice and believe what I want, but at the same time feel that oneness and that energy of absolute unconditional love, love that has no condition. You don't have to believe anything. You don't need to be on any path to be loved, no matter who or what you are. Everyone is included. Everyone in the whether race, culture, sexual orientation, it is all included. Love sees no boundaries. Love loves itself all of the time. And that's what we are here to be as a community. So yesterday, I was inspired by a football coach. <laughs> I was, hi, Bita and David, how fun to see you. It's OK. okay. <laughs> so there is a football coach in Julian's league, the seven to nine year olds. And this is his third year being a coach. And every year, he has a winning team. I mean, spectacularly. They're always heads and shoulders above everybody else. And what started to really interest me is now this is his third year, again with a really fabulous team, but these are always different kids. So I, so I went over to him yesterday and I said, you know, I want to come see what you do in your practices because no matter who your players are, you excel. What do you do? And we turned, we were watching the football game, and then he turned to me, and he turned his whole body to me, and he goes, I'll tell you what I do. <laughs> He said, and I think this makes all the difference in the world. That first day of practice, I don't let any of the kids get their practice jersey until they do this. They stand up, and I have them be in parallel lines, and they all say to one another, they look in each other's eyes, and they say, I promise you, I will never quit on you. And the person that says back to them, I will never let you quit. And they say that to each and every person. And I was being with that. I promise I will never quit on you. I will never let you quit. And I was thinking about that in our spiritual communities. What if we had that commitment to one another? I promise I will never quit on you. What that means to me, in, in a, in a, so if you're on a sports team, it's not that I'm going to go, I, I'll, I'll never quit on you, so I'm going to keep helping you. On a sports team, it means I'm going to play my role full out. 
that the only way this team is going to work is if I give my 100% to being fully who I am as Harriet Hawkins, as I give myself fully to know the power and the source of who and what I am, to continually every day wake up to the truth of who and what I am, to the love source that sources my mind, my heart, my body, to give myself to that as completely as I can every single day for not, my own, not only my good, but for the good of the entire planet. I am committed to my role. I will not quit on you, so I will do what I am here to do. That is what we're saying. I will play my position. I will play my role on this planet Earth. I will give 100%. And then the other person who's saying back to you, I will not let you quit. That's what Nirvana was doing to me. I will not let you forget who you are. I don't care how hard your circumstances are. I don't care what the conditions are in your life. I am going to see you for who you really are. I'm not going to let you forget who you really are. You are a beautiful, magnificent, loving, unique emanation of God, and this world needs you, specifically you. I will not let you quit. That is our promise to one another. So inspired by the coach, we're going to do that today. <laughs> All right, so everyone breathe. Take a breath. Take a breath. Close your eyes. Take a breath. And when you're ready... Make that promise to God, to the world, and to the person across from you. I promise I will never quit on you. And when person B is ready, I will never let you quit. And then we reverse it when you're ready. Give a hug to that person. And when you're ready, you can sit down. Thank you, thank you. So that is why we're here as a community. This community will never quit on you. That we are here for you to be fully who you are, and we commit to being fully who we are. Let us pray.